And now for the dinosaur of the day, Pachyrhinosaurus. Pachyrhinosaurus' name means thick-nosed lizard. It lived in the Cretaceous in North America. It was discovered by Charles M. Sternberg in Alberta, Canada in 1946, and the species was named in 1950. Sternberg also named Edmontia. He was a reverend son, and his sons George, Charles, and Levi also hunted for fossils. So it became a family business or hobby. The first Pachyrhinosaurus fossils may have been discovered, actually, in 1880, but it was the ones found in 1946 that led to it being named in 1950. Partial skulls and other fossils have been found in Alberta and Alaska and different species, but not many fossils were available to be studied until the 1980s. Technically, Pachyrhinosaurus is a horned dinosaur, but it didn't really have horns. Its skulls had flattened bosses instead of horns, with a large one over the nose and a smaller one over the eyes, and bosses are big, flattened bulges. An adult Pachyrhinosaurus had thick sheaths and padding to cover their nasal bosses. They also had a pair of horns from the frill that grew upwards and small ornamental horns on the skull. This varied between species, though, and individuals, and there's three species, but I'll get into that in a minute. In the 1970s, some paleontologists thought that the bosses on a Pachyrhinosaurus' face were just the base for giant horns that may have broken off after they died, but so far no giant horns have been found. In 2013, PLOS One published a study called An Immature Pachyrhinosaurus Peritorum Dinosauria Ceratopsidae Nasal Reveals Unexpected Complexity of Craniofacial Ontogeny and Integument in Pachyrhinosaurus. And they found a new juvenile specimen of Pachyrhinosaurus peritorum, one of the species, in Alaska that showed the changing stages of the nasal boss, quote, reveals a more complicated craniofacial ontogeny in Pachyrhinosaurus than previously thought. At one point, the two nasal bones were fully fused together, and the nasal posterior may have quickly elongated to accommodate this nasal boss formation. Pachyrhinosaurus had bones on its head, possibly used for headbutting, either to find mates or just to fight each other. Specimens have been found with broken ribs and partially healed ribs, so they may have flanked each other. And they may have charged their predators like a modern rhinoceros. Again, three species have been found. Pachyrhinosaurus lacustre from the Wapiti Formation about 73.5 to 72.5 million years ago. Pachyrhinosaurus canadensis from the Lower Horseshoe Canyon formations about 71.5 to 71 million years ago. Pachyrhinosaurus paratorum from the Prince Creek formation in Alaska about 70 to 69 million years ago. Pachyrhinosaurus canadensis was named in 1950, Pachyrhinosaurus lacustre in 2008, and Pachyrhinosaurus paratorum in 2012. The type species is, as you may guess, Pachyrhinosaurus canadensis. In 2008, Philip Curry, Wan Langston Jr., and Darren Tank made a detailed monograph of the skull of a Pachyrhinosaurus and classified it as a second species, Pachyrhinosaurus lacustre, named after the person who discovered it. A Pachyrhinosaurus bone bed was excavated in Alberta in the late 1980s, where paleontologists found 3,500 bones and 14 skulls, Possibly there's a group that tried and failed to cross a river during a flood. The fossils were from juveniles and adults, so that shows that they may have taken care of their young. It was Al Lacusta who found the bone bed in 1973, which is why they named the species after him. And he was a science teacher from Alberta. The Pachyrhinosaurus bones found in this bone bed had convex curved outward and concave curved inward bosses, possibly due to erosion. The Pachyrhinosaurus paratorum species is named after Ross Perot, and this is because he funded scientific expeditions. The boss on the nose was different for each species. Pachyrhinosaurus canadensis had eye and snout bosses nearly together, with curved backwards pointing horns on the frill, two flattened horns that point forwards and down from the top of the frill, and a flat round nasal boss. Pachyrhinosaurus lacustre sometimes has been found with two curved backwards pointing horns on the frill, and it had a jagged comb extension on the tip of the nasal boss, a pommel on the front of the nasal boss, and a comb-like horn rising from the middle of the frill behind the eyes. Pachyrhinosaurus paratorum had eye and snout bosses almost together, a jagged comb extension on the tip of the nasal boss, and a narrow dome in the center of the upper portion of the nasal boss. Interestingly, 
Pachyrhinosaurus canadensis and Pachyrhinosaurus lacustre had two small curved horns that pointed backwards and came from the frill. Pachyrhinosaurus peritorum did not have this, and actually not all Pachyrhinosaurus lacustre had them, so this may have changed based on age or gender. Also, some Pachyrhinosaurus lacustre frills had unicorn horns, but that may just be the way that the fossils were preserved. These are the ones found in the bone bed. In 2014, Darla Zielinski from the University of Calgary announced the find of a well-preserved Pachyrhinosaurus skull, 75 to 80% complete, found in Alberta's Badlands. The skull is an adult and it's large, possibly the biggest Pachyrhinosaurus skull discovered. They found the skull in October 2013, but it took a few months to remove the five tons of rock to get it out. This may be a new species, or it may be part of the three existing ones. The skull is six and a half to eight feet, two to two and a half meters long, and the animal was six meters long, so this means it was very top heavy. The largest Pachyrhinosaurus species was about 26 feet or eight meters long and weighed about four tons. Pachyrhinosaurus lived near other dinosaurs, including ceratopsians, like Montana ceratops, the hadrosaur Edmontosaurus regalius, theropods, including Sauroornitholestes, and Trudon, also possibly the Tyrannosaurid albertosaurus. There were also mostly hadrosaurs in the area. Pachyrhinosaurus had a short tail, about 18 to 23 feet, or 5.5 to 7 meters long. It may have been fast, reaching speeds of up to 20 miles an hour. It had a small primitive hearing apparatus, so it's probably not very good at hearing. And it also had reduced olfactory centers, so it probably had a poor sense of smell. It also had poor vision, based on a study of its brain cavity finding a not very well-developed optic center. It was an herbivore with strong cheek teeth, so at least it had that going for it, and it ate fibrous plants. It replaced its teeth regularly. There was a beak at the front of its snout, so it probably cropped vegetation, and it probably ate cycads and palms. It may have even eaten newly evolved flowering plants. They may have also migrated to warmer climates, following coastal plains, or maybe they stayed in the same area. It's not clear why they're found in both Alberta and Alaska. Their fossils have often been found near Edmontosaurus, so maybe they traveled together. They may have reached maturity at around nine years old, based on Gregory Erickson and Patrick Druckenmiller's study of Pachyrhinosaurus femurs, and they probably only lived to about 19 or 20 years old. Pachyrhinosaurus was the official mascot of the 2010 Arctic Winter Games because a bone bed was near the Grand Prairie, Alberta, and this is a competition for athletes in the north. Pachyrhinosaurus was also the star of Walking with Dinosaurs, the movie, in 2013, featuring Patchy and his brother Scowler in their herd. And Pachyrhinosaurus was also in Disney's Dinosaur in 2000, which was an awful lot like Land Before Time, just more modern graphics. Not as funny. Yeah. Plus, <laughs> no little foot, so I can't say it's as good. <laughs> Pachyrhinosaurus was also in the History Channel TV show Jurassic Fight Club. And the Philip J. Curry Museum opened up in the beginning of September, and in addition to watching documentaries and looking at lifelike skeletons, visitors can actually build a Pachyrhinosaurus with magnets on the wall. Pachyrhinosaurus is part of the clad Pachyrostra, which is part of the tribe Pachyrhinosaurini, which is part of the family Ceratopsidae, which is part of the clad Marginocephalia. Marginocephalia means fringed heads and includes pachycephalosaurs and horned ceratopsians. They're all herbivores with the bony ridge or frill at the back of the skull. They lived in the Jurassic and Cretaceous. Ceratopsidae were quadrupedal herbivores from the Cretaceous, with most living in North America and some in Asia. They had beaks, rows of shearing teeth, and horns and grills. And their subfamilies are Chasmosaurinae or Centrosaurinae, and Pachyrhinosaurini is a subfamily of Centrosaurinae. 